Welcome back. In the last segment, we discussed rocket staging. Rocket staging is a clever and critical way to increase a rocket's final velocity, its delta V, when launching from Earth. And without staging, it's just not possible to reach orbit, at least if you want to arrive there with anything heavier than a paperclip. So in this segment, we'll discuss a different but also kind of clever way to increase delta V when launching into certain orbits. We'll do this by considering where on Earth is a good place to launch a rocket. So to get started, let's look at our old friend, the rocket equation, and ask, is there anything else we can do to squeeze out just a little bit more delta V from this equation? So let's consider each term separately. We've already discussed the exhaust velocity. This is largely set by the choice of rocket fuel and is unlikely to improve anytime soon. Then there's the ratio of initial to final mass. And this is set in part by the mass of the stuff we want to get to orbit, and we always want to send more stuff. The initial to final mass is also set by like the structure of the rocket itself. And this ratio can get better by building rockets out of stronger but lighter weight materials. Similar to rocket fuel, rocket design is already pretty impressive and unlikely to improve dramatically in the near future. We've discussed rocket staging as a way to reduce weight by splitting a single fuel tank into multiple smaller tanks and then tossing the individual tanks as they empty. But with each additional rocket stage, there is increased risk of failure, and most rockets launch with between two and four stages. The last place we can squeeze a little bit more delta V is to consider where on Earth to launch a satellite into orbit. And it's the into orbit part which is the most important. When we launch a satellite into orbit, the satellite is going around the Earth. But the Earth is also going around on its axis. And so the question is, can we use the motion of Earth itself to fling the satellite into orbit? That is, can we gain a little orbital motion for free from the Earth's motion? Our orbit will need to be in the same direction as the Earth's motion, and we probably need to be in a certain place on Earth to gain the most speed. So let me ask you two questions. First, is it better to launch a satellite into orbit near the equator or near the poles? And second, is it better to launch into orbit from east to west or west to east? Let's, tack let's tackle the first question first. Is it better to launch a satellite into orbit near the equator or near the poles? So imagine the Earth rotating around on its axis. At any point on Earth, it completes a circle every 24 hours. So now imagine you're standing really close to one of the poles, say in the Arctic or Antarctic. If you want to keep up with the Earth's rotation, you need to walk around the pole every 24 hours. And if you're really close to the pole, say like within 100 feet, you'd be walking super slowly to complete this circle in one day. In contrast, if you want to complete a circle around the equator in 24 hours, you'd be, you'd be, you need to like move super, super fast. So, that means that the rotational speed of the Earth is much faster at the equator as compared to the poles. And if we calculate this at the poles, the speed is zero, increasing to about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 kilometers at mid-latitudes, and the maximum at the equator is half a kilometer a second. Half a kilometer a second is nothing to sneeze at. That's 1,000 miles an hour, and we would definitely be interested in taking that for free. So save that thought. Free orbital velocity is available by launching near the equator. Okay, so next let's figure out in which direction the Earth is rotating so that we can actually take advantage of this motion. Imagine being an observer from space, like hovering over the Earth and watching it rotate under you. Pick your favorite spot, say New York City. If I watch where that spot moves as the Earth rotates under me, that spot will move towards the east. That is, the motion is going from west to the east. And if we launch satellites to orbit in the same direction as the Earth's motion, towards the east, we can gain this extra orbital velocity from the Earth's rotation. And if you look at the motion of satellites in low Earth orbit, you'll note that a good fraction are moving in a similar direction. This is all to take advantage of the Earth's rotational motion. By definition, geosynchronous and geostationary orbits go in the same direction as the Earth's rotation, so they can also take advantage of this extra delta V. But not every orbit is so lucky. For example, we've talked about the value of polar orbits. Polar orbits go from pole to pole, and as the Earth rotates underneath, it's possible to build up like a detailed image of the Earth's entire surface. 
However, the motion of polar orbits is exactly perpendicular to the Earth's orbital motion, so they can't take advantage of this extra delta V. In fact, polar orbit satellites are often launched from sites that are purposely far from the equator to avoid this motion. Satellites that are headed out beyond the Earth's system may or may not want this extra velocity, depending on like exactly where they're headed. OK, to summarize, to maximize the gain in orbital velocity from the Earth's motion, a rocket launch site needs to be near the equator where satellites can safely launch towards the east. And that word safely is important. Launching rockets is a risky business, so we prefer the region east of the launch site to be sparsely populated or even all over the ocean, just in case something happens in the first few minutes after launch. So now, consider some popular launch sites. If you're in the US, perhaps the first place that comes to mind is Cape Canaveral, Florida. Let's see if this site fulfills our criteria. Florida is one of the southernmost places in the continental US, and there's ocean directly to the east of the launch pad. And the majority of rocket launches in the US are currently from Cape Canaveral. There are other places where rockets are launched in the US. One that's being developed and that's been in the news recently is Boca Chica, Texas. Again, this site is fairly far south, and launching to the east is over water. Thinking more globally, la launch sites tend to be close to the equator or as close as a particular country can get with the ocean or some sparsely populated region to the east. The Russians often launch satellites from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Most of the resupply missions to the International Space Station have been launched from Baikonur and this site fulfills our two criteria, fairly far south and it's very empty to the east of this launch site. While most launch sites want to take advantage of Earth's rotation, some do not. So another idea has to have like a mobile platform that you could move around depending on the particular need of a satellite. For example, China has converted a floating barge which can launch rockets from the ocean. This platform recently launched a four-stage rocket carrying nine different satellites into orbit, with the idea being that this platform can be moved closer or further from the Earth's equator as needed. Okay. Now, having squeezed everything we can out of the rocket equation, a satellite has been launched to orbit. Once the satellite arrives in its desired orbit, the rocket is turned off. The satellite is moving passively in free fall around the Earth. However, you still need a small rocket on board available in case you want to change your orbit or make any small course corrections. So, in the next segment, we'll discuss some additional propulsion options beyond chemical rockets that become available once you're in space. Oh, <laughs> my